everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's Gatling Gunner, the 1989 Rock and Roll, better known to collectors as Rock and Roll Version 2. Now, Rock and Roll was one of the original 1982 characters. He started off as a machine gunner, but here he's now a Gatling Gunner. He makes his first appearance in his new uniform in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe in issue number 97, and debuts his new outfit in animated form in the 1989 Deke animated five-part miniseries Operation Dragonfire in part one. Rock and Roll comes with some great accessories, and quite a lot of them too. We'll take a look at his primary weapon. He comes with two of what the contents list of on the card, as well as the file card itself, calls a 5.56 millimeter double mini Gatling machine guns. Very well detailed. The uh, these actually these barrels are actually a separate piece, although you didn't have to put them together. They uh, actually came pre-assembled uh, in, the, in the card. You'll notice that the, uh, the ammo belt actually hooked on to one side of this uh, Gatling gun. And both of them are exactly the same. They're molded exactly the same, even though there's two of them. Obviously one to be held by the left hand and one for the right hand. These are both, I believe, right-handed uh, Gatling guns. So that's one less thing you have to worry about. If you're looking for one on the aftermarket, you don't have to specifically look for a left hand or right hand version. They are both the same. However, it does make hooking the uh, ammo belt onto here a little bit strange because you will have to sort of twist around one of them because obviously the, the clip for the ammo belt is only pointing one way. Speaking of which, he comes with two of these ammo belts, but the um, contest list on the card calls these bandoliers, which is really very strange because uh, a bandolier is really just a strap that you um, put on your put on your chest, sort of a, in a diagonal. So maybe originally this thing was meant to be able to hook around like this. And he does kind of look like the original 1982 uh, rock and roll like this. Probably the, uh, the homage they were going for. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, obviously there is no spot for you to hook these things onto. Taking a better look at these things. Th these are very, very flexible. Um, kind of a rubbery plastic. And they're very long, so quite frankly, it, it is quite a bit better than many of the ammo belts that a lot of the other G.I. Joe figures came with. Some of them being very short and sort of limiting the amount of range that the figure could pose with these things still attached. But these are pretty much the best ones ever produced, really, in the vintage run. Even though they're, they're not really as highly detailed, the backs are uh, actually plain. The one thing I do have to complain about is the um, this sort of uh, hole and notch system. It works great for the machine guns, but uh, on this backpack they don't quite uh, hook on quite as securely. And speaking of which, he comes with a backpack called an ammo feeding backpack. And you can see, I guess this would count as a drum. And according to the file card, there were a thousand rounds placed in this from the factory. Well, uh, not the toy making factory, but the uh, fictional armament making factory. This would be uh, also an electric uh, item feeding out the ammunition. Last but not least, he has all of these kind of high tech uh, weapons. And yet he also comes with a sort of a backup personnel weapon here. It's hooked onto this side by these two pegs. 
And unfortunately, it does have two holes that correspond to that. Uh, I do say unfortunate because while it's really cool that you can uh, mount this thing onto his leg there, like the 1989 um, Night Viper, the Night Viper shotgun was all black, so you didn't really notice the holes as much. Whereas here, on a light, um, on a light plastic toy like this, the holes are really kind of prominent. Now, one of the things that I mentioned that uh, the rest of his accessories are kind of high tech. This is kind of a low tech weapon. Um, it's sort of a lever action rifle. Uh, this whole part on a real gun, this whole part would actually kind of swing outwards in order to cock and reload the, the next round. It's very, very old fashioned. Even though they do make this sort of weapon um, uh, nowadays, it's not really a military issue weapon. It's something that basically only uh, hunters and enthusiasts would, uh, would buy nowadays. And I would have liked to have had an explanation as to why rock and roll would choose something like this. Because, you know, it's, um, it's something more associated with cowboys and Winchester rifles, that sort of thing. And for comparison, here is the original rock and roll. Now, as you can see, besides having a great big machine gun, one of its other primary uh, recognizable features is that crossed bullet belt. And they've actually implemented that in several ways on the new rock and roll here. Even though it's not a bullet belt, he has a crossing harness on his chest, crossing belts on his waist, which do have bullets sculpted on the back, as well as a crossed little strap on one of his legs. I'm not quite sure what that strap is for, as it's hooked up to absolutely nothing, but it's there nonetheless as a cool homage to the original. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.